So I'm going to push my button and uh, just to let you guys know, I'm nervous. So just get that out of the way. <laughs> but I tell you what, I'm not as nervous as the last time I did my cock back in 2019. And you know why? Because each of you ladies, I've learned to get to know you more right over the years. And I know you guys would just love me. So you guys do real good at that. And you're all nice. Yes, you are. Okay. So uh, this past summer, I was a, uh, this past summer was a journey for me. I, uh, as I wrestled with what it means to grieve, to recognize my own emotions, to identify them, and to be aware of how past wounds can affect me today. As only the Lord would have it, I was reading a book called The Body Keeps the Score by Bessel van der Kolk. Has anybody read that one? At the same time I was reading it, okay. Um, these things together taught me how intertwined our mind, body, and soul are. What I learned was high levels and extended periods of stress, anxiety, and depression, emotions that have not been expressed, or traumas that have not been processed can cause physical illnesses such as heart disease, nausea, digestive problems, headaches, insomnia, autoimmune disorders, muscle tension, and pain. Do any of us experience those? <laughs> um, our emotions can get stuck in our bodies. Hmm. I never heard of that before, you know? My first thought was, if that was true, how can I move my emotions out of my body? because I did not want those illnesses. I did learn that moving your body, verbalizing your feelings, and journaling can help. Also, you can reverse the symptoms you have from holding emotions, the symptoms you have from holding your emotions in the body. So some of them can be reversed. In The Body Keeps the Score, Bessel states, discovering yourself in language is always an epiphany. Even, finding, even if finding the words to describe your inner reality is an agonizing process. And ladies, this is what I want to share with you tonight. Journaling is a way of accessing your inner world of feelings, of letting the outside know what the inside is feeling, a way of asking God to search my heart. This is an important process, allowing the emotions deep inside to be known. When I was young, I never journaled, afraid to journal. What was inside? Probably nothing good. And if I discovered what it was, what was I to do with it? I would probably be told not to have whatever emotions I had discovered I had. That's just the way it was at home. But in 2009, I began the discipline of journaling. When I was counseling with Tim, he suggested this. He said, those who journal regularly are found further on their spiritual journey than those who do not. At first, it was very difficult. What do I write? How do I feel? I really didn't know. <laughs> it was a process of taking a deep breath and looking inward to discover what was there. I also had an emotions chart by my side to give me ideas to what feelings are so I could specifically identify them. That kind of seems funny, right? We just don't know what emotions we have, but... Uh, that's where I was at. It seems the only way I can really look inside is to use journaling as a stair step down into my soul. A picture I have in my mind is me holding a dimly lit old candle um, stick, an old fashioned candle holder, and it's held high to light the way. And as the stairs creak, as I tiptoe down each step into the dark abyss and cellar, right? You guys all have that picture in your mind. And that's how dark it is. It's scary. Beginning at the top stair, then at each step, asking the whys of each thought I discover, going deeper and deeper. And truthfully, asking Jesus all along the way to reveal who I am and to reveal himself to me. When I go deeper, I envision I am working through the different layers of who I am down to the layer where it is just Jesus in me in a place that I can admit to him what I am doing, why I am doing it, and then making a choice to follow him or not. 
As the Lord states in his word, Lamentations 340, let's take a good look at the way we're living and reorder our lives under God. That's the message. In Psalm 139, 23, search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my anxious thoughts. I can be so outwardly focused that I never spend time thinking about why I do things nor why I react the way I do. I personally did not begin to know my personality, character traits, or hobbies until I was in my 50s. And that seems kind of silly, but that's just the way it was. And then it has been a journey. I do believe that those who are aware of who they are and are facing the Lord and desiring to be more like him are more content in the chaos of daily living. In some seasons, when I have not been as faithful journaling, I have found myself running on the surface of life, moving forward at record speeds, avoiding any inspection of thoughts or behaviors and how they affect others. Even though deep down I desire to stop, sometimes I just don't. I believe it's because the heart is deceitful. Maybe that is the reason we have to be intentional with knowing who we are. The heart wants what it wants. It seems to work hard at keeping itself to itself. How we feel motivates us in ways we hardly recognize unless we journey inside. These motivations drive us to do things that may not be very loving to others as we pass them by in life. As the word states in Jeremiah 17, 9 through 10, the heart is hopelessly dark and deceitful, a puzzle that no one can figure out. But I, God, search the heart and examine the mind. I get to the heart of the human. I get to the root of things. I treat them as they really are, not as they pretend to be. And that's the message as well. I just love how it states that. Journaling is a way of processing, even purging thoughts from inside. We bring our hearts to the Lord as we journal, for it is he who brings us the understanding of our heart. We believe that our thoughts are complete, although typically our thoughts are words that are just randomly floating in our minds, unresolved. Even though they seem complete, research has shown that processing your thoughts by putting the words into full sentences gives your thoughts a type of resolution. The words and feelings have been fully expressed into language. Even though the problem still exists, without any conclusion, it settles the mind. Sometimes I have read what I have written and I'm surprised how I feel or what I think. I did not know that that thought or feeling was even in me. There's a great connectedness to myself and the Lord as I freely write on the page. I feel like he's my good friend taking the time to listen. He has shown me things as I write, connecting the dots of my life to how I behave and to what motivates me. Research has shown that handwriting instead of typing is more impactful to the soul. Maybe handwriting your thoughts is a way of moving the feelings out of your body. Journaling is just one of the ways the Lord has led me to be still with him. Over the years, he has taught me other ways. In the beginning, I worshipped him at the kitchen table with my iPod earbuds in my ears and eyes closed, and I couldn't do anything but that. He was just drawing me to it. Then I walked, um, then I walked in nature with my music. Next, I rode my bike with my earbuds. Then, because I broke my arm when I fell off my bike, when I wasn't paying attention to my surroundings, I learned to walk in nature without music being present of my surroundings, I began to listen to the sound of the forest. As I listened, I saw beautiful things. As I walked, I took pictures of God's beautiful wonder in creation. Poetry then became the words of devotion as I saw his beautiful creation, in his beautiful creation, metaphors of godly principles. I truly believe that the Lord guided me through each of these phases of communing with him. It seems he shifts periodically where he is, where I feel his deepest presence. I believe he does this to keep my relationship with him very much alive. When I write the things he shows me, it brings light to my life so then I can share it with others. 
One of the paradoxes of a relationship with the Lord is that even though I have found him, I continue to search for him. As the Lord reminds us in James 4, 8, draw near to God and he will draw near to you. That's the NASB. Does any of this resonate with y'all? If so, be courageous. Pick up that pen and paper and just write whatever thoughts come to mind, even just for one minute. You will find yourself in a different place when you're done.